today's video, I wanna cover a very controversial topic because it's something that pops up from time to time on my channel, and that is problems or mistakes that we see DIYers making when they're doing HVAC. And the reason I say this is a controversial topic is because I don't do a lot of DIY content. I think that there is an argument to be made that a lot of what we do can be dangerous. And if you don't know what you're doing, that can be an issue, but it's been pointed out to me by some of you saying, hey, listen, I don't even feel like the guy that I'm hiring, the HVAC guy down the road knows as much as I do. And so I don't usually fight those battles. I think folks, if they don't know, they just don't know. But if you are a DIY type of person, I wanted to cover in this video some of those problems that we see that come up when I see a system that has been DIY installed. In fact, I can tell you that there have been multiple times in my career where I've come up to a system at a home and immediately said to the homeowner, did you put this in? And a lot of the times it was the homeowner that put it in. But before I dive into these five issues, I do wanna say that I did an entire series of just simply install mistakes. A lot of the problems that heating and air systems have over the life of that heating and air system, a lot of times correlate all the way back to the original birth date of that system, the day it was installed. And I did a entire playlist, an entire series on that exact topic of things you can look out for. And I'll put a link to that playlist down in the description of this video, but I won't procrastinate anymore. Let's get to the five biggest mistakes I see DIYers make when installing HVAC. Number one is I see this one the most common, and that is the line sets. A lot of the DIY products that are sold to Today, the line sets come pre-charged or they don't have an ability for you to shorten those line set lengths. And so a lot of homeowners will almost kind of coil it up, not understanding that that could affect the return of the oil back to the outdoor unit and compressor causing premature failures. I've seen more pictures online of these DIY products of just these line sets just coiled up behind the outdoor unit or near the outdoor unit than anything else. That usually points out to me more than anything that there is a high probability that a homeowner DIY installed this system. But it's not just the coiling up of the line sets that we see. We also see other issues like the connections themselves. So especially systems that say have flare joints or other types of connections like that, or even crazier, a homeowner that's doing things like brazing themselves and making sure that they're following good brazing practices, flowing an inert gas when they're brazing. But as we move forward in this industry, we are seeing brazing becoming less of a thing than it was. It's still probably the most predominant used way of installing conventional heating and air systems today, but we are seeing a shift in our industry where more and more guys are finally getting more and more comfortable with these pressed fittings that we see on the market. When they first came out, a lot of guys were nervous. I was one of them. I certainly didn't want to be the first one in line to use them, but they've now been around for, I believe, over 15 years for one of the brands. And so that's been long enough to work out the kinks, if you will, to know that they're going to work, even if it is an expensive tool. Number two, common issues we see with DIYers. And I would argue that we see this issue with pros as well. And that is the sizing of that system. We do not see enough load calculations done properly. We're seeing a shift in our industry where that's becoming more and more important, which is a good thing in my opinion. But when we see DIYers get involved, the sizing of that system, the sizing of the ductwork, all of that, a lot of times is not done properly, which can cause an array of issues such as humidity problems, premature failures of the system itself, and so on. Whether you're a homeowner, a pro, whoever, one of the things that I did when I met a good friend of mine who offers this service is we now offer where you can click a link down in the description of this video and get connected with JC who does load calculations remotely for folks. So if you need a load calculation to know that that system is sized properly for your next project, click the link down in the description of this video and you'll be able to get connected with him and that service. Number three, electrical connections. We see a lot of DIYers not do a lot of the electrical installation, the connections and so on up to code and sometimes safely. Just because it works does not mean it's up to code, does not mean that you're not gonna burn somebody's house down 
in the future. I see things like the high voltage wire being brought into say a disconnect or an HVAC cabinet and they didn't use a Romex connector for example. Or they're doing things like landing those wires under lugs, not up to code, maybe it's stranded with solid wire, maybe it's two different gauge sizing on the wiring, things that are not to code. And this one, I would argue even from the standpoint of the first two where you could have premature failures and so on, number three with electrical, this is a safety issue, especially if you don't know what you're doing and you are DIYing one of these systems, you could be causing safety risks for you and potential future homeowners of that property because you're not doing things properly. Number four is the instructions. I can a lot of times know if a DIYer or even a pro, but whoever installed that system, I can tell if they read the instructions or not just by simply when I walk onto the property and I look at the system, a lot of times something will jump out at me immediately because I'll say, well, they didn't read the instructions there because that's wrong. Things like clearances around the outdoor unit, having proper airflow on the indoor unit, having the dip switches set correctly, having certain distances I've even seen some instructions go so far as to say we want the low voltage wiring because it's a communicating system to be this far away from the high voltage and it can't be any closer than that. Yes, that sounds small and minuscule. Yes, the system may still work after you installed it, but you didn't follow the instructions and you're going to have future problems because of it. This one probably used to drive me more nuts, more frustrated when I did own my heating and air business and employ others. It would drive me bonkers when I would hire someone and they just would simply not read the instructions. A lot of the callbacks or problems we would have would be directly related to that problem alone. And then finally, number five common issues we see with DIYers, and that is some of the accessories we see added or not added. So in cases where by code, they're supposed to be adding ventilation to the home or proper ventilation or filtered ventilation or whatever, they're not doing that. Maybe they're adding some of the indoor air quality products that we see today and they're not doing that up to code or correctly. They're doing things like pulling the power from the control board for the UV light, for example, and that's a no-no, which can cause premature failures on that system. Maybe they didn't add surge protection to that inverter or ductless system. That's a big problem that we see today. Or go one step further with say something like a phase monitor. Or if they did install it, they didn't install it correctly, especially in cases where that surge protector needed to be wired in parallel. And again, as I said before, they're not doing things properly from an electrical connection standpoint, causing things that would then possibly cause future fires, fire risks, fire hazards down the road because they're doing things like landing that stranded wire under the same lug and it's causing it to get hot and so on. Maybe it's not grounded properly and that surge protector doesn't have a proper place to lead that surge to ground the way it's supposed to. So those are my biggest issues. I think there's plenty of other honorable mentions that we could talk about in this video. Things like ductwork not being sealed properly or installed properly. Other things like, I don't know, the arm of flex on the suction line, whether that's being installed correctly, whether it's being protected from UV protection the way it's supposed to be today, just things like that. A lot of times I can walk up to a system and know whether or not it was professionally installed, whether or not those things are done the way they're supposed to be. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section. This is always a hot topic, especially with folks that do think that they are DIY capable, that they don't want to call the last guy they use for one reason or another. Love to hear about that down in the comments section. If you like this video, I think you'll like this one even more. It's where I talk about the five biggest HVAC mistakes that I see made in the wintertime. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.